Welcome to Draw with Edvir. This week we're going on an adventure. We're going to draw a real lion. I'm someone who loves lions. So last year I was incredibly lucky to start work as the Born Free Foundation's artist in residence. Born Free is a brilliant organisation who work hard to ensure the survival of animals living in the wild. I was incredibly lucky to travel with Born Free to Africa, to Kenya, to paint wild lions in Amboseli and Meru National Parks and to learn about the amazing work Born Free is doing. I'm writing and illustrating a book for Born Free talking about my adventures in Africa, where I spent a lot of time on the roof of a Land Rover, driving through the bush, tracking wild animals, learning how they live and learning how to draw them. I was also there to learn about the many challenges these animals face as the modern world makes their lives more difficult and to understand how we can help and what Born Free is doing and to meet the amazing people who've dedicated their lives to helping animals who were born free to stay free. But now onto the drawing. We're going to draw a beautiful lion called Kameo who I met in Meru National Park it's a bit of a challenge, it's quite complicated, but it's not too complicated. I'm sure you can do it. Just remember to watch what I'm doing and really remember that you can pause the video at any time if I'm going too fast and you need to catch up. You'll need paper, coloured pencils, and if you like, a bit of paint. That bit's optional. Okay, so... First of all, I want to start by putting down a background colour. So, I'm going to mix up. This paint is uh, yellow ochre. I'm using a gouache, but anything like a poster paint will be perfect. And yellow ochre is basically a mix of yellow and brown to a sort of sandy lion colour. Okay, now you can use one of these to speed up the drying. Okay, so that's nice and dry now. Um, so I'm gonna start, as I start nearly all the drawings that I do, um, with the eyes and then I try and work out where everything goes from there. So we're going to draw Kameo lying down with his head up. So his head's going to be around here and his front paws here and then his back here and his back leg here. So try not to make your head too big um, to begin with. So let's start with um, shape a bit like this and it's gonna be the first eye so it's quite small on your piece of paper and then over about here we are going to draw so a line curves round like this And then, can you see how I'm drawing a soft line here to sort of work out where I think the line should be going? Something like this. And now, these amazingly piercing eyes of a lion with his attention on something. So from here, we're gonna try and work out where his nose should be. So there's a faint line that runs down to about there, I think. And now we're gonna draw and it curves up a bit here, then it comes down, and then it goes like this, and it 
just goes up here. So this is really important to remember that you can pause this video at any time you feel you need to catch up. And the really important thing is that your lions are your lions. They don't need to look like mine. So I'm just drawing and this is a guide. So don't worry if your lion doesn't look exactly like this, it shouldn't. I don't know what this lion's gonna look like yet. Um, and I'm gonna make lots of mistakes along the way. And that's a really big part of art and drawing, making mistakes. So don't worry if you think you've made a mistake, you might find, you will definitely find that by the end, that mistake was not a mistake. Some of the most alive pieces of art are alive because the artist made mistakes. And when you make a mistake, essentially what you're doing is learning. So each time you draw, hopefully it's getting better and better, but it's only getting better because each time you're learning and those mistakes are a very big part of what helps you learn. So, I'm not gonna talk you through every bit of this. Just copy what I'm doing as best as you can. And we'll see what happens. So, I'm gonna use a bit of pink here. Don't worry if you don't have pink. Also, if you don't have a yellow background, don't worry. You can use any colours that you want. Um, it's not important that it looks just like this. So here's his mouth. And let's have a look. So. try and get the shape of this side of his. So I'll just draw again some faint lines here to try and get the shape of his head right, or right-ish. Drawing is always ish. Kameo, this beautiful lion that we saw, is, I'll tell you a bit about him, but he's um, what's called a sub-adult, so that means he's a year and a half, which in lion years, that's like being a teenager. So you'll see his mane, which is a bit like a beard, it's just starting to grow in. So I'm just starting to put some of the marks of his mane in there and I'm starting to trace out his ears here. So I'm going to also try and work out his chin. And that's, if you've noticed the lion's chin, it's quite often a bit like a, a bit beardy. And then, okay. Don't forget, you can stop the video any time you need to catch up. I'm definitely going quite quickly here. So that ear comes around to here, and let's have a look. I think we'll just 
Scott in the sense of his his mane. And I'll draw some heavier lines a bit later. At the moment, I'm just trying to work out roughly where everything goes. And I can already see that I've probably drawn this too big or too low down, and I might not get all of his body, but that doesn't matter. Let's see. So this here, is a shoulder and that will come down to about here and can you see this line here this is going to be the inside of this part so the shoulder will run down and then shoulder and the uh, his upper forearm which is his front leg and then sort of his lower part of his front leg runs down here and then I think a paw and claws go here something like this I might adjust that later something like this okay now let's see let's uh work on the other front leg. So that's going to, well, let's work out where the shoulder goes. So that will be something like this. And it comes down to about here. And so this is a sort of part of his um, upper front leg. If he was standing on his back legs, that would look like his his arm, his upper arm. And now... This is his wrist. And then... This is his paw. This is quite difficult, I know. But... I know that you are going to make a great drawing. Now don't worry if you can't see that it's good yet. Stick with it, and I promise it will be by the time you finish. I can never tell if I'm going to do a good drawing or a bad drawing, but I have to get to the end to see. Okay, something like this. Now then. I'm going to draw this back going along here. Around here is going to be his back leg. So it's sort of squatting, it's in a squatting shape. And we'll come down to about there. And it's sort of difficult to see what's going on. There's yep, something like this. So then we have some folds of his skin. Okay, something like this. And so that's a knee, essentially. That's the top part of that back leg. And then this is his chin. 
and it's very hard to distinguish. But I promise you, it's a lot easier drawing like this than it is drawing out in Africa when the animals are moving all the time. They certainly don't stay still to let you draw them. In fact, when, you, when you're watching them, they know that you're watching them. They don't always like it, especially lions. Okay, so that's that paw there. And then we see a bit of his other leg tucked under his tummy. And I will come here and then we just see a little bit of the pads on his feet. So if you were to look at a dog's paws, do you have a dog or a cat? Or a dog's or a cat's paws, you can see the pads. And lions have these huge pads as well. That's how you track lions. If you see the shape of their paw pads, then you can work out that the footprint in the dust is what you are using to track a lion that may have gone past a day or two previously, or maybe an hour or 20 minutes ago. And the guys I was with were expert trackers. Oh, hold on. I'm gonna start using some, I'll tell you about the guys I was with. I'm gonna start using some colors now. So maybe a blue here but I want you to use whatever colors you think. You'll get the sense of what I'm doing, but then you can make it up as you're going along. It certainly doesn't need to be a blue there. It could be a red or an orange or a purple. And what I'm trying to achieve, if you can, can you see the direction my lines are going? So I'm, I'm trying to get the sense of the shape of his head. So my lines, are, my lines are gonna go in that direction and maybe a bit like this. Let's have a look. So I'm gonna draw a bit and you try and see how you get on more or less doing what I'm doing, but in your way. So when I was in Meru, which is the, the national park where I met this amazing man from Meru, I was with four guys who work for the Born Free Foundation and their job, what they do every single day is go out trying to find lions. They track lions and they do it in many ways. One of the ways is, as I was saying before, by understanding what their footprints look like. And then on they these guys are on foot. So I was with Newton, Moses, Moses, and Shadrach. And their job is to follow sometimes in a Land Rover and sometimes if they need to, on foot. Which, uh, which is an incredible thing to do if you think you're walking around and behind every bush, there's the possibility that there might just be a huge hungry lion. So they're very brave, these guys. Incredibly brave, but they love their job because they really care about making sure that these beautiful creatures have a future still living in the wild. Because their life is threatened in many ways. Now humans 
are making farms very close to where the lions live and sometimes exactly where the lions live. And if they have cattle, the lions are very tempted to go and eat the cattle. So Born Free's job is to go and try and lessen the conflict between humans and lions. One of the ways they do that is by building something called a boma. So the families who have cattle and cows in Kenya, and they love the cows very much, cows are a big thing, um, very tempting to lions. So they live out in the wild and they keep their cattle in what's known as a boma. And a boma is a thorn enclosure and that's supposed to keep the cows safe from lions at night. The thorn is just really easy for a lion to get through. So Born Free makes lion proof enclosures for the farmers. And that means they don't end up in competition with the lions. The lions aren't able to eat their cattle. And so if the lions aren't eating their cattle, they're not getting angry with the lions. Because when they get angry with the lions, traditionally, they have tried to kill the lions. And there are so few lions left. There used to be thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of lions. And now, very sadly, there are only 20,000 lions left living in the wild in Africa. So we can't afford, we definitely cannot afford to let people kill lions. And these people who are born free are trying to help by protecting their cattle from lions, at least all they're trying to do is live their life and we can help them do that. There are obviously people, well not obviously, but there are people who amazingly want to shoot lions just for sport, which is a horrendous, horrendous thing to do to this beautiful animal. And Born Free is doing some amazing work trying to educate people to stop hunting lions. Okay, let me draw a bit more. Let's see. Let's do some color in here. Can you see how gradually we're building up the shape of this lion? Here we'll get some of the sense of the light on this bright, sunny African day falling on Kameo. 
and a bit. It's just coming from behind, so we see a bit hair on his beautiful mane. And just haloing his ears like this. Now, all lions have whisker spots, and these here are the whisker spots. And every single lion has a completely unique set of whisker spots. So, Moses, Moses, Newton, and Shadrach were able to are able to identify all of the lions in Meru by looking, by photographing, well they get to know them because they see them quite often but they also photograph um, the lions and they look at their whisker spots and then they can know for sure that this lion is Kaleo and that lion is whoever that lion is. Ooh. The whiskers are sometimes a bit of black and a bit of white. I don't know, have you got a white crayon you can use? Don't worry if you don't. So, I should tell you how we met Kameu. I was lucky to be in Meru with Will Travers, the president of the Born Free Foundation. We'd spent a lot of time seeing the work that Born Free does in the park and with the communities who live outside it, helping them to live alongside in a way that reduces conflict. On this day, we were looking for lions. It had been a long morning and we hadn't seen any, partly because Meru is so full of bushes and trees and shrubs that the wildlife can hide from us very easily. Eventually, we rounded a corner and there, sitting on a small hill, we saw Kimeo and a lioness. He was magnificent, by far the most beautiful lion I'd ever seen. I thought he looked like a king in waiting. He knew exactly how beautiful he was, totally confident and with a piercing laser focus, looking far out to the horizon, completely ignoring us. As a teenager, his mane was just starting to grow in, but he was already big and you could see that he's going, he was going to grow into a very powerful lion. We sat and watched him for a while, feeling lucky to be so close to such an incredible animal. I sketched him, took a few photographs, and after a while we decided to leave him in peace and drive on. As we reversed out onto the track, he also got up, so we decided to turn the engine off and let him cross just ahead of us. He moved, pausing near the side of the track, taking his time to look around. I lifted my camera to take a couple of photographs, then quickly he changed direction, coming straight towards us, quickening his pace. Me and Will of both tents were sitting on top of the Land Rover, completely exposed. He's a very large and dangerous cat, who were both well aware could jump on top of the roof in less than a second and eat us for lunch. We froze completely. He was inches away. I took a few silent photographs, icicles running up and down our spines. It was both electrifying and terrifying. He was completely unpredictable. We didn't know if he was going to leap up or walk past. In that moment, I was really aware that my job is just to paint pictures. Here is a powerful predator and his job is to hunt. 
and he's a couple of feet away from me and I definitely didn't want to be hunted. His massive paw hit the tyre of the Land Rover and as he walked on his face contorted and his teeth were bared which wrinkled up his nose. A warning snarl which tells us that we are in his world and here he is the boss. He continued to walk on just behind the Land Rover only a foot away. We couldn't see him at all. Was he preparing to leap up? More icicles running up and down our spines. Very, very carefully, I crouched down, turning to see if I could see what he was doing through the back window. Amazingly, he was in the process of lying down to lie in the shade of our Land Rover. Not being eaten by Cameo was a massive relief, but coming so close to a lion, living wild and free, made me realise more than ever how important it is that we do all we can to protect the world he lives in and make sure that the 20,000 lions left living wild in Africa are safe from the damage that we do. It doesn't feel right that a lion like Cameo is kept in a cage in a zoo or can be shot for sport. A lion is built to be wild, to live open and free, the king of everything he surveys. Nature is so precious, every bit of it. The birds you hear outside your window, the bees buzzing around collecting nectar from flowers, and the insects creeping around in the undergrowth. All are connected and all are important. And we are a part of that amazing ecosystem. We are animals too. But the amazing thing is that we are animals who can decide to help the others rather than harm them. Where are the front legs? Again, here's this wrist. So I'm just going over the lines to make them darker so we can see them a bit better. Sense of where the claws are. So a lion doesn't always have his claws out. They're retractable. So this, these aren't actually the claws. They, these are the little pockets that his claws sit in. If I drew the claw, it would come out like this. Here we go, these are the pads again. Can you see? It's quite difficult drawing these legs because they're coming out towards us. That's an effect in art called foreshortening. And it's always complicated and hard to make it look right. But hopefully we are getting there. Let's do a bit of sense of light coming across here. And I think we might be very close to finishing now. I always think a really important thing to learn when you're drawing is knowing when enough is enough and it's time to stop. And I think there is enough, pretty much, that you can always carry on forever. But I think we're close, very close, to getting a sense of who this magnificent lion is, young Cameo. 
I wonder what he's doing right now. Might be lying in the sun. Might be doing a bit of hunting. Might be playing with his friends. Lions do a lot of playing. People think they're only ferocious. And that's not true at all. Lions are incredibly playful and affectionate. And if you watch a pride of lions together, pride is the family, they spend a huge, they spend nearly all their time lolling about in the sun and bonding with each other. And you really get a sense of very deep love between them. So, I think that is just about that. The last thing to do, I'm gonna write my name at the bottom and you can write yours too. And that is how you draw a lion called Cameo. That was complicated. How did you get on? I'd love to see your drawings. You can share them with me using the hashtag drawwithedvere. And if you like, you can find more of my drawing videos at edvere.com. What's really important is that you have a look at the Born Free Foundation website where you can find out much more about lions and what we can do to help their lives in the wild. Until next time, happy drawing.